Welcome home, everybody. This is the Residency Podcast. We are back. Here we go. We are pumped. New episode, new week. And uh, today, you got me, Jeff Tomastic. You got Drew Belcher. You got Lil Raven yes, here. Sir. Big episode. Big episode. We got a guest, though. We got some new flavor today. We got an incredible guest, world-renowned celebrity chef, all-around amazing guy. Uh, you've probably seen him a ton of time on Food Networks, on, on Chopped, a lot of other TV shows, too partner and chef at some of the most popular restaurants in the country, Vandal, Beauty in Essex, in New York and LA, and here at Cosmo in Las Vegas. We got our boy Chris Santos here, yes, man. Yes, sir. I really welcome, appreciate welcome. you. How are you? Your um, dish has been chopped. Yeah. You, yeah. Your, your hair is all intimidating. <laughs> no. <laughs> bring me into a room with three full heads of hair, and there already I feel like I'm no, under attack. You should hats. We didn't, we didn't do the hat thing. I feel ah, like I'm yeah. under attack over here. <laughs> well, I mean, none of us can cook for shit, so okay. you're good. Yeah. 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 You, you got us that way. Okay. You went on that, too. We're glad Lo didn't actually bring down the ponytail, too. His hair is like a mile long. Luxurious. Yeah, yeah. It's got flowing. I had long hair. I'm a big metal head from from the time I was about 12 years old so I have pictures of myself from like high school and even early like culinary school days I had my hair was like down That's my rad. waist and I'll pull them out sometimes oh, yeah? and my kitchen will trip out like they're <laughs> like no way because I've been bald since I'm like 28 yeah I'm 50 so um so when, when I pull that out people just like they lose awesome. we gotta see some of these photos yeah, yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll take a look later yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I sure. can pull them up <laughs> okay okay I love that too well we want to give everybody a background really quick on where you got to today too but just the very beginning too, how did you get into food, right? You obviously made this decision kind of early in your life. Yeah, I mean, how much time do you got? Yeah, just, um, just uh, like, like the, the really on, on like how it really started, right? That yeah. first real move. Well, I mean, so, you know, okay, I've told this story before, but it's a fun story to tell. So, um, you know, when I was about, so I was living uh, in a tiny town in Rhode Island. I grew up from a tiny little town in uh, Bristol, Bristol, Rhode Island, outside of Providence. Um, you know, small little, what you would think of a New England colonial town, not much going on. And uh, my high school then, because of that because of sort of small townness, it started in eighth grade instead of, like, I think it traditionally is more like ninth grade. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, you know, young. And so as soon as I went, went to um, high school, I discovered metal. And I discovered that all the kids that were, like, the long haired kids that were in bands and had a car were getting all the girls. So I yeah. came home one day and was like, Mom, I want a car and I want a it's drum set. It's always the simplest reason, right? Yeah. You know? and I was like, Mom, I want a car and I want a drum set because I want, you know, I want the girls. And she's like, well, then I guess you better get a job. Um, mm. so, uh, so I worked. I got a job as a dishwasher. Um, saved money for two years. Mom was cool. She matched what I saved. We, we got the car and the drum set. We won't talk about the girls. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I started Success. working. Success. It worked, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Welcome to life. But, um, but I started working in a restaurant uh, when I was about the end of maybe my 13th year and I never worked a job of any kind like I'd shoveled snow in the winter and mowed lawns in the summer but I never had a job job yeah the classic and, cash yeah, cash yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and so the first I think and I think I was getting paid two dollars and 75 cents to wash dishes Holy. at the time um but uh the first night that I ever worked the, the chef quit and um this is not a story about me saving the day this is actually the opposite I made it worse <laughs> um the chef quit in the middle of his, his shift like I'm washing dishes listening to like Guns N' Roses in the corner and all of a sudden um you know, I don't even know how to wash a dish. I mean, this is how like basic it is. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden, there's a lot of yelling and screaming, and the chef storms away. And then he comes back in two minutes later and takes like some tools and stuff. This is mine. And so the owner um, started cooking, but I don't think she was a chef um, or a cook for that matter. So she was flipping out. Right? It was a Saturday night. Yeah. Ooh. Um, so she sent me downstairs to grab uh, a thing of tomato sauce that was in the freezer. Um, and now. I grew up in the 70s and 80s, so I'm dating myself, I know, with you guys. But, um, you know, it was a refrigerator here, and the freezer was up top, right? This yeah. was not the case. She had, like, a chest freezer downstairs, oh, yeah. and it was so filled with stuff that it was, like, bungee corded shut. So I walked right by it, didn't even realize it was a freezer. I had no idea. came up empty-handed, <laughs> immediately got admonished, go right back downstairs, find it. So also the first time I ever experienced a bungee cord. So when I undid it, it was oh, so tight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hit me in the air, stung, stung like crazy. Um, I found the tomato sauce. I came upstairs. She said, throw it in the microwave for eight minutes or whatever she said. And I went back to, to the corner cowering, um, scrubbing into pots and pans. And um, eight minutes later, the microwave goes off, and she told me to grab it and bring it to her. So oh. I opened the door. I grabbed it like this, if you don't mind. And it was like lava, so I dropped it immediately. Oh. It hit the floor perfectly. And all the sauce came up and splattered all over me. And I had to go to urgent care. <laughs> Hot sauce, um, yeah. Yeah, um, oh, to fuck. get for burns. And, um, and, oh, my God. Uh, and completely, completely, I mean, made her night even bad to worse. Um, and then you'd think I would have been like, 
fuck restaurants. Excuse me. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but, you can uh, say fuck. You can yeah. say fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but it was the opposite. I love the adrenaline rush and this and that and the other thing. And so I went back to work, I guess, the following weekend, and um, she had a new chef, and he was like this young, good looking Irish guy. He was like a rock and roll chef, quote unquote. I hate that term, but he was that guy before it, that was that guy. We're talking Got it. 1980. Right. Four, 1985. Yeah. Um, you know, he was this young guy, super charming, changed the menu. People were coming into the kitchen and telling him how great the food was. He took me under his wing, immediately took me away from washing dishes and just stupid shit like peeling carrots and tomatoes. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, not potatoes. Um, uh, and, you know, taught me how to kill lobsters and stuff, which I was a 14 year old metalhead I thought was super cool. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, you know, and he was like, you know, dating the cutest server and yeah. um, leaving me a six pack all around with all the baddies yeah. all leaving me you know leaving yeah. leaving me a six pack of beer behind the garbage uh, for when I closed out at the end of the night I was and I was like this is who I want to be this is yeah. it it's done yeah. it's that's it I've made it everybody yeah. there it is yes, and so, uh, awesome. so as a matter of fact so my, my first cookbook came out I guess two years ago now and um, there's an acknowledgments page in the back and, and I acknowledge him because I lost touch with him after about the age of 17 and he was from Ireland. I think he went back to Ireland. I, but now in the age of the internet, like I've Googled him. I've tried to find this yeah. guy because I don't think he has any idea that he, it was because of him that I am where I am today. That that's, I really, truly admired him. And also the fact that he took me under his wing for a couple of years and really taught me. He was my first teacher, you know? Yeah. yeah. And so uh, so I wrote in my book, it says, you know, to, to his name is Enda Mullen. I said, to, to wherever you may roam, I hope that you see this and know, you know, that this book is in part dedicated to you because without, you know, you taking an interest in me when I was yeah. a 14 year old kid, you know? Um, so it started there. Total other direction could have happened. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I still play drums. I still play drums. Um, uh, uh, it's funny because I'm actually starting a band, uh, at 50 years old with a, a really famous guitar player. I'm not going to blow up the spy. I'll tell you guys when we go after the podcast, but, um, it's pretty cool that I have the ability now. I've made some friends. And yeah. Never too late. I have a record label too. So I've made a lot of friends in like the rock and heavy metal world. And so now I'm, they all want to jam with me, which is that's awesome. fun except like compared to I mean I kind of suck on the drums let's be real uh, compared to them <laughs> but but it's but it's good motivation it's good they also motivation. probably suck at cooking yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, can't yeah, be yeah, good yeah, at everything yeah, all right just yeah, off the exactly. break all right exactly but um but yeah so I went to just to, just to really briefly I mean move the time for uh, the chronology forward so I went and went through high school um you know playing drums and, and and working at these restaurants and then went to culinary school so again so I graduated I, I was not quite 18 when I graduated and wanted to be in a band, and again, mom stepped in and said, "Go to culinary school. It's two years, and yeah. then go go be go be a rock star. And yeah. if it doesn't work out, at least you have a culinary degree, right?" Yeah. So I went to school, and I did really well in, in at culinary school. I graduated with honors, and they actually asked me to come back for, for two years on a scholarship to be a teaching assistant. That's awesome. And so I did do that, um, and then moved to New York City in '93. Um, 22 years old. God, I'm dating myself. So right back when like Times Square was gritty and dingy. <laughs> um, and uh, I had like $500 Change. in my pocket and I um, uh, didn't really know. But I knew I, you know, my original plan was I was going to do three years in New York, three years in, in um, New Orleans and three years in San Francisco. That was my master plan coming out of culinary school. Right. Yeah. And then I'll be 30 and I'll have it all figured out. Well, I never left New York until very recently. Um, and so uh, very quickly got thrown in over my head, was an executive chef of a restaurant when I was 24, which I really had no business being an executive chef. That's young. A really, yeah. really sort of iconic restaurant called Time Cafe that's not there anymore, but um, it was busy. You know, we do 700, 800 people a night and for brunch. Jeez. And so I learned on the job and then uh, I did accumulate money because for a few years, not a lot of money, but um, for a few years, all I did was work around the clock. Yeah. And so when I was about 26, 27, um, I just said, you know, I'm taking a break. And I went and to that point, it was still just a job. I mean, I was good at it, successful at it, and I was having fun with it. But it didn't hadn't really sunk in yet. Like, this is just what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, um, but then I went. So I, I took six months off and I went and I backpacked through Europe. I went to 14 countries, 40 cities, and I didn't really work. Jeez. I just ate. But the culture in the in the 90s of food in Europe I think America's caught up in a big way in the last 20, 25 years, but it was different then. There was a much different divide in the, just the, the passion for food. Like, like the way I would describe it is like in New York City at the time or in any city in America at the time, you've got your really great restaurants, but then all the smaller kind of mom and pop restaurants, were, eh, they're not that good. Yeah, sure. Whereas in Spain and Italy and Barcelona, it didn't matter if you were in, in one of the best, most renowned restaurants in the city right. or just some hole completely out of the way hole in the wall. The reverence for the food was just unbelievable. That's awesome. And so I really came back energized um, from that experience. And so then I had a new goal in mind, which was I had to have my first restaurant open before I was 30. Anyone listening out there that might be 
um, an aspiring chef, do not try to open your first restaurant before you're <laughs> 30. <laughs> Did you, did you ever think anywhere else besides New York to do this? I mean, because New York no. was probably the most competitive landscape no. that there was. You came no. back and said, all right, New York. Yeah. Yeah, Not only 30, but I'm taking on the New York City. Let's do this. Yeah. As a matter of fact, at that time, um, and up until very recently, which I'm sure we'll get to, I never thought I'd leave New York. I just moved to L.A. Uh, just real, literally within the last month, um, which we'll get to later. Uh, it's, of course, it's about a girl. But um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing's changed. Yeah. Nothing's, nothing's changed. changed. Nothing's changed. changed. It's yeah. the same story. Exactly. Um, but uh, um, I, I wanted to open a restaurant before I was 30. So I did. I, when I was 28, 28-ish, I opened up a really small restaurant, 27 seats. Maybe two. 27 <laughs> seats? 27 huh? seats. Three, wow. three bar stools and 27 seats. Wow. Um, in the kitchen was myself, a sous chef, and uh, a dishwasher that didn't speak English. And to this day, that sous chef still works for me. Wow, um, amazing. He's, he's, I love he's that. He's now my uh, culinary, executive culinary assistant. He basically does all my test cooking and research and development for right. me. A guy named Tim Peterson. And then the dishwasher that didn't speak English um, is now, uh, <laughs> became the executive chef at my restaurant, Stanton Social in New York. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, and wow, right wow. now is executive sous chef at Vandal and is probably going to move over to Beauty and Essex soon. So sick. That's amazing. He's really yeah. paid, paid the mentor thing forward. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, for that's sure. Dope. Yeah. For sure. Um, but being ingrained that when you're young too, it sticks yeah. with you, man. This, yeah. I'm kind of the same way, man. It's, I got kind of mentored down the way and I love that portion. But you keep somebody so close to you that yeah. you become, though they become what you are. Once it happens to you, you, have, you, you almost can't not yeah, I mean, exactly. listen, I've been very fortunate. I got a lot of a lot of my team has been with me for a decade or more, um, and awesome. and I've got at least a handful that have been with me for twenty years or more. But that's also not just because you know I'm so great to work for. Uh, I mean, I, I like to think that I, that I give them, a, a, you know, continue their learning and this and that and the other thing. But also, the culinary business is, you know, as you know, as you all know, um, the, the the restaurant business, the hospitality business is rife with turnover. And especially yes. when it comes to the food, I always found that I, you know, it was, uh, I was always, I've always been willing to take really extra special care of the really, really good ones. Um, not that I don't take great care of everyone, but the ones that come in that really have talent, that really have, are unpolished, that I can really, you know, really make and, and turn into something special. You know, it's it, it's much more worth it for me to pay sort of. Um, what would I say, like over market rates to keep these people mm -hmm. um, because what happens is that they learn over the course of time how much salt is the right amount of salt or mm -hmm. how much ol olive oil is in the pan is the right amount. And if you have to keep teaching people this, right. people over and over and over, well, then your food is not going to be consistent. And I think one of the hallmarks of my success personally as a chef in all the restaurants I've, I've owned and or chefed at is Consistency has been my hallmark. Um, you know, it, you, it does, you know, if you, you go to Los Angeles and you have a dish that's on the same, uh, if you go to Los Angeles Beauty in Essex, have a dish that's on the menu in Vegas and in New York, it should taste exactly the same. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and, and yeah. I believe we do a good job at that. But anyway, going back to the story. So I'm 28 and I opened up a restaurant. 20, I mean, it was really like double. The kitchen was smaller than this room for sure. And the <laughs> restaurant was maybe two of these rooms, maybe a little bit more. No, actually about two of these rooms. As I can see, there's another room right next to me with glass. So I should have noticed that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so, you know, we did really great. We're, we were busy out of the gate. I got my first New York Times review by Sam Sifton. It was amazing. Um, uh, but I didn't know what I was doing. So I was hemorrhaging money. I couldn't pay myself some weeks. Some weeks I had to ask these guys that, you know, to pay them only, a, you know, half of their, you know, I get you the other half on Tuesday. Sure. And, uh, and it was, in a, it, was on, it was in Little Italy in New York City. And it was in an old tenement building that was a walk up. And um, when I built it, I didn't have any money. I don't come for money. Um, you know, I, I didn't have anybody to, to ask for money. So I, I built the place on a shoestring. So the exhaust system was really like the most basic model possible. And it was malfunctioning. And so people's apartments were filling up with like gnarly oh. smells, like the old <laughs> grease and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and also, it's the hottest kitchen to this day. I mean, we're going back to 1998, 99, 2000. Um, still, the, without question, the hottest kitchen like ever. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Um, I, I it, like it's funny. I don't know if you know what sous vide cooking is, but you know, sous -vide yeah, in the water, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't do this now. Um, but 20 years ago, <laughs> the kitchen was so hot that an hour before service, I would, you know, if we had, you know, again, we were a small restaurant, so I'm talking about very small amounts of food that I needed. Yeah. You know, if I had 50 reservations. You know, an hour before service, I would take out eight pieces of salmon and put it on a sheet tray, put it on a shelf, and it would sous vide itself in the kitchen. No. The kitchen was so hot. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would just sear it and pan <laughs> yeah. it. And, and, you, and you're in the game. I mean, this is really what I was yeah. doing. The, the, the secrets of what's really going yeah. down behind the wall. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, totally crazy. But anyway, so um, so I was getting a lot of complaints, um, and we had a club downstairs that was not, it was, we worked together as a group, but we weren't partners. 
And the tenant, and so we also had a lot of, lot of loud people outside smoking and stuff, so the neighbors were just not pleased. We had a neighbor, in fact, I'm, I'm not making this up, we had a neighbor, in fact, who would huck um, unopened cans of, like, Campbell's tomato soup and a line <laughs> of people waiting to get in the club at like two o'clock in the morning. No. Yeah, it's really, really fucked up. That's so dark. But anyway, so as to the experience, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know? Yeah. Duck, <laughs> you want to eat here, you got to earn it. <laughs> so, um, so the exhaust system's not working. My neighbors are pissed. I don't, I can't do anything about it because I don't have it, two nickels to rub together. Um, and one day I go into work and turn, flip the exhaust system on and it's just not working. It's not, I'm like, so I'm like, oh, what's, what's up with that? So I walk up the eight flight walk up in the middle of the summer and, um, and someone had disconnected the entire stack oh. and there was an, and it was lying in a pile in an alley. So there was no exhaust system without an exhaust system. You can't open. Yeah. So I closed for the month of August and, uh, it was going to cost me $10,000 to, this is before the internet, this is before, I don't even, I think this is before cell phones. So I, uh, I raised $10,000, like $500 from this friend, you know, 20. Right. It was like a, the original GoFundMe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then, um, you know, got it up and running. And then, uh, on a Friday went in with my sous chef and, and, uh, who's now my culinary assistant. We decided what, you know, we we're going to rebuild the entire menu. I, Time Out Magazine was like the big thing back then. Yeah. I called in a favor. They ran an ad. Wyanoke is coming back, whatever. Um, and then uh, we get in, went in on a Monday. We spent like 16 hours there. We made the entire menu from scratch. And then we went to go open on Tuesday. And that Tuesday was 9-11. No. Oh, so um, we never reopened. Wow. Uh, is, the sh- is the short story. But um, that was like devastating, obviously. And I was, you know, 30. I was 30. I was actually 30 at that point. Didn't have any money, Um, uh, you know, um, owed a lot of people a lot of money. Yeah, the Um, 10,000 plus, yeah. You know, back in a day where, um, well, not just that, but like vendors and stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I was in Little Italy, and without getting too specific, it was back in a time where, you know, if you owed somebody money and you didn't pay up, you were getting a visit at your house saying, you got a month to pay me, or, you know, and that really happened to me. (laughs) It's really weird um, story to tell, but... uh, so I was like, you know, it's whatever it takes to get the restaurant open, you know what I'm uh, saying? But but at that point I was so devastated. I went I actually had a really amazing experience from that and that I went to go I went and cooked at Ground Zero for 2 days. Um oh, wow. which awesome. was a really an amazing life-changing incredibly sad experience. Um but I but when that was over, whatever. Um I was like I'm coming I called my mother and I was like fuck this, I'm coming I'm going back to Rhode Island, you know? Like yeah. I, I can And my mother was third time Stepped up and said, "No way." She's like, "You want to come home for a week and hang out with me? That's cool." She's like, "But you know, that's not the son I raised." She's like, "New York needs you more than ever." She's like, "Dust up, that, dust man. it Love off, that. and get going." Yeah. And sure enough, about a week later, somebody called me. They had loved my food. Um, they were sad that my restaurant closed. They offered me a job as a chef uh, in a Spanish restaurant. I was there for a few years. Uh, meanwhile, I started scouting again. I got my courage up again to open a restaurant. Yeah. And uh, I had all this time uh, been friends with Rich Wolf, who was one of the, the co-founders of the Tau Group. Yep. And uh, we've been really very close for going on 30 years now and um right yeah well 26 and so uh, we would have dinner every now and then and we'd always kind of joke and say why you know i haven't we done a restaurant together you know yeah and he was opening you know he he, he um found a tower group and he opened tau and he opened tau came out here and opened tau vegas and tau beach yeah and tau nightclub and then um we decided to open up a restaurant called stanton social together that was separate off tau group um Got and it. we opened that on the lower east side which was still pretty gritty in 2005 um, it just closed last year because our uh, our lease our lease uh, ended or our lease um, yeah our lease expired and you know the the, the the neighborhood partially because of us has changed so much now that the the asking price just didn't make sense yeah, so we're look, sure. looking for a look, new location for that um, and then you know one thing led to another Rich and I then took the success of Stanton Social and we created Beauty and Essex together. Um, and then um, we decided to do a Beauty and Essex here in Las Vegas. So that first one was like a partnership, like Tau Group and Chef Chris Santos present. But that uh, first one in New York, too, went crazy. Oh, right? yeah, that was crazy, was like, yeah. And what yeah. year was that, the first one in New York? Yeah, well, you know, so here's kind of tying back to the other story in a way, spirit, you know, spiritually. Um, in 2005, I opened Stanton Social. Um, I had to invest money to open it. I didn't have that money. I had to borrow that money. So yeah. I'm just an endless cycle of not having any money. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I am determined to make this work. Yeah. Hey, and then in 2010, I finally accumulated some money. And then I, with one check, signed it all over to the construction of Beauty and Essex. Nice. And I remember walking into Beauty and Essex, which was a block away from Stanton Social. Excuse me. And it had been an old furniture store, and it was like 
wow. full of full. I mean, full, 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 full of furniture that you <laughs> know, that, that you you could barely get through the walk through the aisles. Well, once that was all cleared out and it was gutted, I got a real sense of how big the place was, and I immediately panicked. I was like, first of all, how am I going to fill this place up? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Second of all, if I do fill this place up, what am I doing to my other restaurant, which is right around the corner? Yeah, cannibalizing. Well, yeah. luckily, none of that happened. We were an instant hit from day one. We were slammed Sweet. from day one. Stanton Social got busier as a result for some reason. Yep. Awesome. Um, and then that finally got me on my way. Um, and then, so then we came out here. Uh, I kind of partnered with Tau Group um, to open Beauty in Essex. I uh, couldn't have done it without them, quite frankly. And yeah. so then like, we started having the conversations about, well, why don't we, you know, we did another kind of partner, like sort of not official, but in partnership, kind of did Vandal together. Yep. And then finally we decided, why don't we take these brands and just fold them? And so I became a partner in the Tau Group. Yeah. And then we opened Beauty in Essex in Los Angeles and Hollywood along with the Tau there. Um, and a highlight room, which is kind of an yep. outdoor thing. Um, and so now I'm a partner in all the venues, although my my particular um, focus is to, is on the Beauty and Essex brands and also kind of research and development on some new brands. And of course, sure. And then there's another chef partner in the company, Ralph Scarmadello, who does an amazing job with the Tau and Lava brands and, and, and that kind of thing. So, so awesome. did you, would, was Vegas, when that came up on the radar too, were you excited about it? Was that like the first, like, all right, cool, we're going to, the second Beauty and Essex is going to be Vegas. Like, this is where it needs to be. Well, you know, when I knew, one thing about Beauty and Essex, if anyone you know out there is listening has been there, it's such a beautiful, like pristine, like very feminine looking restaurant. And the, the Cosmo where we're at, like with the chandelier bar and everything, is like a perfect fit. Like yeah, it almost dope. seems as if the Beauty and Essex was designed with the Cosmo in mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, we are, it's re- been a really great partnership there. Um, we, we do very well there. You know, we're busy all the time. Um, and, uh, and people seem to love it. Um, and... Yeah, Who came up with great. the pawn shop part? Uh, that was well. I well, I mean, I think that's just like, it's such a crazy unique yeah, thing. If you guys don't know, by the way, in the front of Beauty in Essex, there's a pawn shop. Yeah. Not like, yeah. oh my god, this looks like a pawn shop. Yeah, it's a pawn no, shop. it's a pawn yeah. shop. You can it's buy like a- any, you can buy anything that's there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like. I mean, I want to say it was my idea, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah. sold right there. Soundbite, yeah. got it. That sounds my, good enough. But, but, my, but my partner Rich might disagree. Um, and we had a third partner at the time who was no longer with us. You know, he's no longer part of the partnership. But he might have even said he did. But <laughs> yeah. but, I, but we wanted to do so. Okay, so Stan the Social was named after. So okay, I have a cookbook that just came out. It's called Share. Yeah. My whole thing, my whole culinary career has been about sort of communal dining and lots of small plates. And that Love I started it. doing that in the '90s. I'm not the first one. I'm not going to. I'm not the first one that did it. Um, but it always seemed like you know for the system of ordering an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, and I am having my own thing, and you're having your own thing, and you're having your own thing, and having to only choose that one appetizer, and that one entree, and that one dessert, it, it, oh, I always made the connection in my head of like, it would be me going to see, again, I'm, a, I'm outing myself here, like as a metalhead, but it'd be like, me like going to see Metallica, but they are only playing the same eight songs every night, yeah. you know, or, yeah. or, you know, that's all I can listen to when I want to listen to Metallica is the same, and I have to, have to choose from this. I, I didn't like that. So I basically started doing menus that didn't have entrees. Everything was just small plates, and we can scale them larger for the size of the table. Right. Yeah. Um, and so Stanton Social was, that was the spirit of Stanton Social, was on Stanton Street, and it was a social kind Got of thing. So when we went to open Beauty in Essex, I wanted to do the same thing. Um, I did, I named those, I've named all our restaurants, well, Vandal, Stanton Social, and Beauty in Essex. Anyway, um, I wanted to do the same thing, and um, and... So we had the Essex part because it's on Essex Street. <laughs> right, right, there you go. <laughs> but it was like, what, what are we going to call this place? You know what I mean? And so we didn't really know. And then we knew because Essex Street was very, very, very gritty at the time. Um, very, like, just gritty. Um, not like 1990s gritty where you go to, like, score drugs, but it was not too far removed from that. It was gotcha. pretty, pretty grungy neighborhood. Right, right. Um, and so it was pretty ballsy to put a really beautiful kind of over-the-top restaurant there. Um, and so we knew we wanted to transport people into the restaurant, and we wanted them to have, like, an experience in between from the grit to the, to the, to the, to the, to the glam. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and so we were thinking, what can we do? And we were going to originally do, for a long time, we were going with the idea of, of like, a, a branded convenience store where we would have whatever our name ended up being, we would sell water and cigarettes and yeah. whatever. Like a bodega-style kind but of we, Yeah, exactly. We are yeah. going to do a bodega. Um, but we were like, that's not really sexy, though, and whatever. And then... Um, <laughs> I had been, I jokingly, I, I had some friends, uh, I had some, I have some good friends in the, 
this is a dumb story. I have friends in the adult film, film industry, and we were joking about it. And I said, oh, we could do like a porn shop, like one of those sex toy shops or whatever. <laughs> okay. But Not a I, dumb story. No, that's but, great. Yeah, that, but what, yeah. so That'll I, get people to walk right back. But, we should, we but should I, said, I said, that could be campy. You know what I mean? Like, make, you know, keep it clean for, for the, you know, it's going to be a restaurant. You know, keep it clean. But we could do a kind of a clean riff on that. It could yeah. be fun and campy. And yeah. as a matter of fact, there's a place now in LA, there's a bar called Adults Only that does that very thing oh, where wow. it looks like you're walking into like a, um, the, the X-rated VC like video section of, yeah. a, of the old video yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you walk through that and then you're in the bar that's Dope. pretty cool so I, right. I was thinking something like that Yeah. so I said it to my partners but they thought I said pawn P-A-W-N oh. and they're like that's brilliant oh, and I was it. like it is brilliant right and we probably spent <laughs> we probably spent like three days so who's ordering about, first right yeah. like, I thought we were talking about one thing and they yeah. thought we were talking about something that's else that's amazing but once we decided on the pawn shop, P A A W N, you know, we decided. Sends a to, mood board. It's a little bit different than everyone else's. <laughs> you know. My deck is way different. Excuse me. Uh, um, we then all of a sudden jewelry became a part of the, um, you know, how do we make it rock and roll? And aesthetic, it, it was, yeah. So we have the guitars on the wall, but you know, jewelry became a big part of it. So then jewelry started all of a sudden in, um, informing the design of the restaurant. So if you walk around any beauty in Essex, you'll see so many nods to jewelry. Like all the big giant pieces over the couches are basically blown up pieces of like our grandmother's antiques brooches and, and bracelets and necklaces yeah. and things, yeah. um, which was really cool. And, um, you know, uh, the locket room, you know, is the, the all the lockets that we have in the restaurants are, you know, were, especially at the first one. and, and uh, as much as possible now, although everyone's busier, but they were all like hand found, like really true antique vintage lockets. So we kind of started that tie in and then that informed the name beauty, right? Yeah. Beauty and Essex, right? I'm not sure w what that long answer, what the question was originally, but <laughs> that's, that's the <laughs> yeah, answer. Yeah, no, that's um, great. And so, uh, you know, it's done very well. It's, it's proven to be a great concept that people really love. Um, the food is great. I got a great team of chefs in every city, a uh, great team of not just chefs. I got a great team. Um, in every city, so we definitely look and expand into other cities with that with that concept. Um, that's can we short. can we get a little inside info here? Who's who, what city? What city in just, the running? I like mean, top three. I mean, look, there's nothing that I can say that that's we don't have a lease signed anywhere, so there's nothing concrete. But we would, you know, we have a town in Chicago now, yeah. So it would make sense yep. to follow that up, um, and we all love Chicago, yeah. Um, uh, you know, and then we, there's other cities that we think about that we, you were not sure, like maybe Miami, maybe not Miami, maybe London, maybe not London. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we keep, we, we keep playfully talking about going into Canada, um, like man, Vancouver or Canada. Toronto, 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 yeah. 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 Toronto or yeah. Miami. Yeah. For yeah. sure. So who knows? For I sure. mean, yeah. but, but honestly, we don't have options. Anything. That's great though. You know, and we, you know, obviously we all, we all had to, had to hit the pause button with this pandemic. Yeah, of course. Um, right. yeah. You know, we as a company, we have over 50 restaurants and nightclubs, um, across America and in Singapore yeah. and in Australia, Sydney, Australia. And we had to lay off almost 5,000 people, which is heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, many of whom, like I said, we have been with me for yeah. 20 years. Um, and so we've hit the pause button on all that. So I think it'll be a minute before we really start ramping. Ooh, get everything, that, get so. everything back to neutral. You know what um, I mean? Yeah. So, you know, now we just started reopening. We reopened here in Vegas on June 3rd um, at 50% capacity at the Cosmopolitan. Um, we're reopening. Speaking of beauty in Essex, Specifically, we're opening in LA on July 9th and in New York on July 15th. Um, Tau is a little bit uh, uh, accelerated in LA and New York. They're opening before Beauty and Essex. Here in Vegas, Tau is opening in a couple of weeks um, behind Beauty and Essex. We just opened Lavo here as well at, at the Palazzo. We opened the Day Club. Um, for socially sort of distant um, experiences, we're doing the day club. The pool lounge vibe. That's the new yeah, Ve the new pool, Vegas yeah, the new yeah, Vegas quotations, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Bikini pool vibes. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's it's. I'm torn. In, you know, there are a lot of partners in my company and a lot of people that make decisions, and I'm not at all saying I disagree because I don't disagree. But it's but I'm torn, right? Like I want to get my people back to work. I want them to be able to make a living. I want to get back to doing what I do. I want my, everyone that, that, that in our work family to get back to what they do. Um, but you know, it's also there's. I, by the way, I so I had. I don't know if you guys. I had the coronavirus. I tested positive in late February. Wow. Um, at and the I was, beginning. Yeah, and I was very, Yeah, and I didn't even know what it was at first. Yeah. Um, I went to a doctor, got antibiotics for 10 days, got worse, went, got tested, and it took 10 days to get my result back. So it was from the time I really felt really garbagey till the time I got my results, it had been like three weeks. Shit. Wow. But I did, did come back positive. Yeah. Um, I was really, really, really sick for over four weeks. Um, did not go to the hospital, was not on a ventilator, it wasn't that sick, but um, certainly there were three or four days where I was strongly urged by my doctor. I luckily have a doctor that was in the neighborhood and who. In, is good. For, this is in New York, yep. now. Up. Right, right, right. Um, and he would kind of check on me every day. And but the idea of going to a hospital in 
like just being ugh, just, I for sure. I, I hate him yeah. too. Yeah. So every so when it was especially really, at that time, yeah, like, yeah. Like, but I mean, but I'll tell you, it was, it was it was without question the sickest I've ever felt. Like I had the, the worst headache of my life for like two weeks. Yeah. I um I had all kinds of aches and pains. I was so body tired you know I mean I'm a 50 year old man I have to get up like once at least once a night to use the bathroom yeah. <laughs> and I would just lay there and suffer because I yeah. was just so tired yeah. you know what I mean right. um, and the coughing was unbelievable um, so I wouldn't wish it on anybody so that part of me is like ooh are we are we, are we right. opening a little bit early yeah. not just and when I say we I don't mean Tower Group Beauty and Essex I yeah. mean just sure. everywhere. Everywhere. Sure. everywhere absolutely yeah. you know um, I want to open I want to get back to normal as, as quickly as possible but the, the part of me that remembers how bad I felt yeah absolutely um, yeah. you know I'm so happy now um, uh, I wasn't here last weekend but, um, I'm so happy that Cosmo now is requiring masks for everybody yeah. Yeah. unless you're actively eating yeah. or drinking um, well now it's the whole state Nevada, Nevada, everywhere. Nevada, everywhere. everywhere right now th- th- that makes me feel thousand times better yeah being yeah. yeah um you know i just feel like there's it's just and it's not because of anything other than i just don't think we know enough about this yeah. thing precautionary um, right what's you know, why not at this point you know i'm, I'm not a I'm, i don't get into it from a political viewpoint or i'm not getting into an argument about you know if you don't want to wear a mask i mean that's it's your own business but i just feel like that if there's there's not enough concrete information i mean i, I literally got te- so i just got tested again yeah um, yeah just to be uh just my my wife hasn't had it and i'm just getting tested periodically because i'm just making yeah. sure you know and right. so i've had three negative tests since my original positive which is all great news but like even this last time i said you know to my doctor i said i said I, should i stop coming back like i really I, i'm immune technically right no one's gotten it again right? yeah, yeah and she I, I mean maybe she was just sort of doing what she has to do but she literally kind of put her hands up and was like we don't I really can't know. Tell you. Yeah. 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 For yeah. yeah, for I'm sure. learning with you as we go. You know, so well, I mean, we're, the Vegas has been interesting, right? Like, we, it opened back up, and everybody, I think, was a little bit weary a few weeks ago, and yeah. the comfort level has gotten a bit better. Yeah. And obviously, Nevada just changed that you have to wear masks with everybody yeah. too. But you can see the excitement of people doing it. And sure. I think Tau Group and the casinos, especially, right? Everyone is they're paying all the rules or being as safe as humanly oh. really possible. They're doing what they can. And I think it's making everyone feel as safe as they possibly could when they go out and they're enjoy they're still enjoying the atmosphere they're wanting to go out to dinner beauty's been super yeah. busy i mean i will tell you we have spent and when i tell you hundreds i mean i'm not even exaggerating a little we have spent as a company hundreds upon hundreds of hours um tr- making sure that we are opening as like to the right way beyond the 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 suggestions of the CDC and the WHO. Yeah. Like we yeah. are going far and beyond we're that. ready we're ready um, for normalcy we yeah. have we've been having since like april a daily call for an hour a daily call monday through friday with our partners every day leading up to our opening like to make sure that we are you know first and foremost we want to protect our our, our own family which is our which is people we work yeah, with right? yep. sure. we spend yeah. more time with with our work family than we do with our real families and so that the first thing we want to do is create an environment that is safe for them Absolutely. Um, and then obviously the second part of that is we want to make our guests as safe as possible and so sure. um and you know we we uh, we've been extremely careful and diligent, and um, you know it's making it more difficult than ever to actually you know make money because we're spending so much additional money in yeah. sanitizer and, and gloves yeah. and masks yeah, the and precautions for sure. You know, we're getting our, our kitchens electrostatically cleaned and just you know doing all this crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, but we just feel like it's either it's we're not going to do it unless we're going to go. Hundred yeah. percent, absolutely. As, That's as, the way it should be. You know, yeah. And so. aside from the safety stuff too, it's got to just be. I mean, of course, everybody wants to be as safe as humanly possible, right? You got that down, but it must be an amazing feeling to be like, oh wow, people, butts in seats again. People are yeah. back enjoying yeah. your enjoying the food, enjoying the experience. The idea, you know, just the opening Vegas is was uh, that experience of just getting just getting the stoves back on and get, yeah. you know, just feeling yeah. good, baby. Just uh, you know, we have a really my my kitchens are very. Uh, we're tight. We're a tight unit, and there's a lot of camaraderie, and we hadn't seen each other in months, and so yeah. kind of back, getting back in and doing what we're doing was Everybody. really great. Cooking and, with fire, baby. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and I make a lot of table visits, and uh, people, you know, people, you know, because I've been on Food Network for over a decade, so some people ask to meet me, or whatever, and just the enthusiasm I was getting on this last couple of weeks here in Vegas, like people are just so happy that we're reopening. For sure, so, cool. so happy to have something to do, and for you know, sure, I understand yeah. that sure. too. I understand that yeah. too. They just want to get back um, out there. Yeah. Speaking of that, by the way, so you're opening restaurants all over New York. Yep. You're expanding the Beauty and Essex brand, the Tauger brand across the country. When? How did the reality TV show start? Like, when? When did you just? This is a whole yeah. other aspect. Hop on yeah, I had a lot of stuff. Multiple going on. seasons of, especially yeah. Trapped, right? Like, yeah. how, how did that happen? How did that start? Been, really, that's been a while. Yeah, 
I'm, uh, Did you get a call years. one day like, hey, you got a yep. face for TV? Like, get on down to the studio. You know? <laughs> well, I don't. I think I have a face for this. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that camera. Off. Um, I always, I always make the joke that I was young, thin, and handsome when I started Chopped, and now I'm just handsome. <laughs> but, um, but that's not even true. Uh, uh, it was 11 years ago, I guess, or 12, 2008, and I got a call. Um, so I had done like a little bit of TV, but nothing really. It was just more like you know the Today Show and Good Morning yeah. America and to push your brand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. And I guess somebody saw me and liked. Oh shit! Sorry. Uh, somebody saw um, saw me and liked. Whatever, and they, so I got a. I was I was here. So randomly enough, I was here. It was 2008, and I was helping open Lava when it first opened. Um, gotcha. Even though I wasn't part of the tower group, but my connection was Rich Wolf, With the Rich, co-founder. Yeah. Right. And I so I had Stanton Social in New York, and they were getting ready to open Lava, and they asked me to come out and help and support. So I was out here for for just a few weeks. But while I was out here, I got the phone call. Like, um, we got this new show, Food Network, would like you to come on and do three episodes. So I guess I'm not really sure. We're going back 12 years if this is exactly the right story or the true story, but I guess my recollection is that everyone, a bunch of chefs got kind of like three episodes. Yeah. yeah. And then the ones that, that did well or that, I guess, test market did well recurring. or whatever. Yeah. So they asked me to do, uh, at first they asked me to do, you know, a season, um, which is th 13 episodes. And then, you know, then it was two seasons at a time. Then it was three at a time. And now here we are 11 years later and we've done over 600 episodes. I've wow. done almost, I've probably done about 220 of them. That's crazy. Um, You've tasted a lot of dishes. A lot. What <laughs> is your yeah. favorite dish and your least favorite dish yeah. on Chopped? Ooh. All right. Well, we're talking about 220 200. shows. First one that comes to mind. Like, you're and like, you're all talking right. talking nine dishes per <laughs> show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're talking over 2,000 dishes. Yeah. Um, one of them's had to st stick out. Um, or, a, yeah. Well. Or maybe a one chef that maybe impressed you the most or one that was just my all mom, the dishes just sucked. Me yeah. and my mom won the Mother's Day. Wow. There was a Mother's Day uh, edition and it was uh, the judges and their moms against each other. That's awesome. And me and my mom won. Mom sounds um, incredible, by so the way. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That mom's was, a rock that star. Was, that was really an incredible experience to do that with her. But um, but I would say um, Gavin Kaysen, um did a, uh, a, uh, a fish cheek dish. I couldn't tell you what it was. I just remember thinking... He took a fish head that we gave them, and he made this the most incredible dish. Um, I, I don't I don't remember the, the particulars. It probably is ten years ago now, but it was just unbelievable. Um, and then the worst dish. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. The worst dish isn't really. I, I'm not gonna. It's not the chef's fault. Um, so I don't like. So I'm allergic to shellfish. Um, and so and so other things make me a little uncomfortable. Even yeah, though I'm not allergic to them. Uh, like sea and sea urchin is one of them. They have, that one has nothing to do with the other, but just for some reason, sea urchin makes me uncomfortable. I also don't like it. Um, I don't like the texture of it. I don't like yeah, it either. Uni is like yeah, I don't like, like it either. It's kind of yeah, like yeah. My, 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 never mind. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's the same texture. It. You, you could say it. Yeah. You could say it. Yeah. Not a banana fan. It's all right, guys. Yeah. Not a banana. Fan. Not a banana fan. Well, you know, I'm not a banana fan because we you don't like uni either. You don't like the texture? No, it's, I'm not a banana fan because when I was a kid, we would keep them. Um, until they turn like that black color, oh, yeah, and and we wouldn't throw them away until it was waste. And I was like, anything that turns that color, I just I don't know. But anyway, it got ruined. Anyway, ah. um, but uh, uni uh, is just I don't like the texture of it. And okay. so, going back to the early days of Chopped, I was a little bit more. I've I've settled down quite a bit. Um, uh, I haven't gotten married yet. I call her my wife, but we're getting married in October. Um, looking Congrats. to start a family. Yeah. We just got a puppy. Congrats. The whole thing. But um, I was a little bit different back in the day. I was hell on wheels. Um, I got a pretty, pretty, pretty hefty reputation on the Lower East Side in the East Village of New York as being a hellraiser. Rage, um, rage, and rage. Yeah, um, Candida, Richard Candida. Yeah, could yeah. probably speak to that. Shout but, out um, to Richard. You know, we've had we had a couple of drinks here, a couple yeah, cocktails yeah, in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> but I used to, um, you know, back in the first couple of seasons of Chopped, I would go out late the night before and roll into work, and it was no big deal. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, over whatever. But one night I I was particularly banged up, um, and it was the last night. I had not in probably seven years showed up to Chopped. Have it. I don't drink the night before a Chopped. I call it school night. I'm, it's a yeah, school night yeah, now yeah. Because I this was the this was the most hungover. I walked into that <laughs> studio and, and the first round had uni, so I had to eat four plates of it. Oh and no! And none of them were particularly well prepared, and the texture is something that makes me gag when I'm perfectly sober yeah. and not hungover. And oh, there's man. 14 cameras around you. Yeah, so you just can't. lights burning, <laughs> sweating. Oh my and god! I learned my lesson that day, and I never ever again uh, drank. Wow. I never drank the night before Chopped ever again. It's been at least eight years. So do they have that is. on camera? You like going just, wild? On oh, I, you know, I'm sure that no one noticed it, but if I could go back. 
back and look at that episode, I'm sure I can notice. You just it. know you're struggling. It's fucking yeah. hurting. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking hurting. Yeah, the yeah. uni yeah. punishment right after. Yeah, that's not yeah. hangover food. That is for yeah. damn sure. I'll crazy. give you that. Uh, um, I mean, I'm sure you've had some pretty crazy experiences over those ten seasons, right? Like, yeah. I mean, it's really, it's, it's really crazy. Uh, you know, um, so I was a bo- I boxed for a long time. I, I started boxing in 1993. Um, I got a little bit of a late start, but I took it really seriously, and um, um, I was like sparring like champion pro fighters, right? Um, and at a place called Gleason's Gym in, in Brooklyn, New York, which is famous. Mike Tyson trained there. Yeah. Muhammad Ali yeah. trained there. And so I was training five days a week. I was like oh, 168 wow. pounds, 175 Fuck. pounds. Um, literally sparring with like, you know, I don't know if you guys remember like Arturo Gotti or. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah I sparred yeah, with yeah, Arturo yeah. Gotti. Yeah, that's like, crazy. You know, whatever. I'm just started training again. I'm in L.A. with Freddie Roach is training me. Um, awesome. Which oh, wow. Which is really cool. But, right, there you go. But, um, but I, was get, I was taking it so seriously that I was, I was getting injuries. I broke this knuckle. I had the same rib broken twice. And right before Beauty and Essex opened in 2010, three weeks before we opened, I had my rib broken. Ugh, and oh, and I was also getting like cortisone shots and my rotator cuffs because I was in the gym all the time. Yeah. And my partner said, um, you know, Rich, I uh, yeah. was like, dude, what you, like, what are you doing? We're opening a restaurant <laughs> in three weeks. Relax, and like, guy. And now you broke Calm your down. Rib. So I was like, you know what? We opened in December of 2010, and I, I said, you know what? And I was going through a, a kind of, a, you know, I was going through a divorce, which is never fun. I said, you know what, I'm going to take 2011 off from the gym and just rest my body, focus on it, put all my energy into making this restaurant a success. Yeah. yeah. And one thing led to another, and I didn't get back into a gym until last year. One oh, year wow. off turned into eight years off. Sure. And so I went from 175 pounds to 250 pounds. Um, I'm like 215 now. I've lost a lot of weight in the last year boxing. But one of the things that's just funny, and it, you, I think it was you that just asked, like, what, what's changed over the 10 years? It's just my weight has changed. And so it's always great and always really uh, humorous when Chopped will play, like, a back-to-back episode from, like, 2008. Oh, and then like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got to deal with Twitter for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, hey, Chris, I, what happened? I got to, yeah, like, post yeah. real-time photos of me now. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, I, I'm back on track, guys. That's yeah. fucking awesome. Not only can he outcook us, he can also <laughs> kick all our asses yeah, off. Yes. Well, yeah. I, could, I could kick your ass for about, I got I got for about a minute. For about first round. I got 50-year-old uh, yeah. stamina. I don't have that 30-year-old that stamina That's anymore. Fine. That's fine. Awesome. A good um, minute sometimes better than a bad 10 minutes. But you know, I just bought a new house. Facts, 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 facts. My girl tells me all the time. Back, one hundred percent. I just bought a new house, a new home in LA, and I built a boxing a studio in it, and so awesome. that's that's been a big help, and that's a lot of fun. So, oh, it, boxing's great. always been something I it, like. It's my meditation. I yeah. can't meditate. I can't. My my mind just won't quiet it enough. My wife <laughs> meditates all the time, and she's like, "You should really try to be really good for you." And I'm like, "Meditating for me is just getting in that gym and boxing and working on my skills." Yep, and that's whatnot. sanctuary for sure. Yeah. I like it. You're gonna start coming back to Vegas more. You got a wild Vegas story from back in the day to tell us real quick? Oh, a cl- classic story? <laughs> no. <laughs> podcast episode? I definitely have wild Vegas stories, but maybe if I come back. Kind of Can't be done. recorded. Um, yeah. I d- we, so I came across this too. You did a collab salad with DJ Mustard. I did. That's hot. I did. This it is this fun. is this is the fun. coolest collaboration I've ever seen. Yeah, last You're- year, last year. He, so DJ Mustard was our, is... Uh, I mean, I, I presume he still is. I don't even know. With this pandemic resident, st- yeah. stopped everything. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but when the when when Marquee Nightclub was 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 doing its thing, um, Mustard was a yeah resident. Was a, was a resident and a really super cool guy. And he would come in and he and he loved the salad that I made him because he's he was on this health kick and um, yeah. so we decided to kind of collaborate. And he told me what he you know I said what would your what would your dream salad be and he. He started listing these ingredients off, and I said, "Well, we should do some fun with it." And so we did. We kind of That's did this rad. video of me cooking him. That's I have, fucking I have, cool. I have some great photos on my phone of him like taking a bite and then like giving me like the most, the warmest, most genuine <laughs> hug because he was so happy. Yeah, what was going on in his That's mouth. So like, cool. Um, so that was really fun. Um, I've had a lot of good experiences, you know. In um, I'm like a D-list celebrity, right? Meaning, and I'm I'm not being self-deprecating. It's just true. If you watch Food Network, you can get really, really excited. To, to see me. Yeah. Um, if you don't watch Food Network, you, I, I get a lot of side eyes. Like, I recognize that guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, who's this guy? <laughs> Seen yeah. him on Twitter. Yeah. But, you know, but it, be, I just, it's weird because of it, there are these unexpected fans that of the show that become your friends. You know what That's I mean? Awesome. Like, I, you know, I grew up in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. You know, I got turned on to hard rock and heavy metal by Kiss. And now yep. Paul Stanley from Kiss is a huge job fan, and now him and I are friends. You know what I mean? That's so fucking so cool. Like, yeah, cool. yeah, that's, that's you know, fucking really, really cool. cool. But I'll, t- I'll tell you a funny story. So, do you guys watch Food Network at all? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm in Vegas, and um, it's probably two years ago. And every now and then, you'll get the fan that just like flips out and starts like starts crying. Yeah, it's happened to men and women. Um, actually, I did a thing at Tao Beach last year for Inks Magazine, and uh, and some dude 
start crying like, got on his knees, hands and knees when he met me. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> but um, but but it was sweet, I guess. Thank you. Um, very sweet. But, very sweet. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yeah. so you know, every now and then, I would say a couple times a year, and I've also had. I mean, we, I could talk all day. I've had stalkers. I've had to put somebody on a oh, no. list and wow. list with the um, the FBI had to get involved. This guy that was stalking me and threatening my wife at the time, my mother, myself. Um, it's a long story, but uh. But anyway, I, every now and then I get these fans that just like lose it when they meet me, and it's 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 very sweet, um, and and I'm and I'm always happy to, I mean I'm, I'm in, I, to say I'm blessed and I'm not like a super religious guy, but say I'm so fortunate to be on on Food Network and on that show would be an understatement because I love my work family there. I learn so much there. Um, you know, it's great for visibility. It's great for our brand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. um, yeah. You know, it pays some bills. It's really yep. good. You know, um, but so there, there are some super fans, and so. I'm coming. It's in Vegas, and I had gone out. Uh, I hit the roulette tables, won some money, so of course went directly to Sapphire, and yes, um, yeah, and then um, came back at like four or five o'clock in the morning, and was just going to my room, and um, uh, I stay at the Cosmo when I'm here, and uh, there these four or five young women were approaching me, and one of them had the moment like she's just like, <gasps> oh my god, you're yeah. the Food Network guy, and tears <laughs> and all this stuff, and so I'm hugging her and. You know, when we're taking pictures and it's all cool, and then um, when it's finally over, I'm like, all right, have a have a great weekend. You know, if you want to come eat tomorrow night, blah 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 blah. Um, as we're starting to like part ways, um, I hear the girl who was actually taking the young woman who was actually taking the photos like. I don't get it. Who was that? And the woman who had been crying and everything goes, that's the Ace of Cakes guy. Oh, oh shit. Oh, man. Shit. Oh, whoa. Wow. Definitely not that's buddy. Amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really thought that's... I was dumb. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> crying the whole thing. Oh, Maybe it was because it was four or five in the morning, you know? Yeah, yeah it was just, like, woo. Yeah. All right. You know, that's the old roller coaster emotion. They're like, "Oh wow, that was a bit." What? Yeah, <laughs> got him up. Hey man, stole one from you. Sorry yeah. about that. You know, <laughs> totally really got crazy. you. Did really you take the photo, by the way? I took the photo. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't break it to her. I She's didn't say, "Ah, it's not me." I yeah, no, you're like, "Fuck it." I'm just gonna, gonna let it roll with it. In yeah. The, yeah. In the yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> I can 100%. bake a cake. I mean, it won't be as good, but I can bake a cake. You try. Fuck That's it. fucking hilarious. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's been the only time, the only mistake, celebrity, celebrity sighting mistake, maybe. Um, weirdly, I get, I get both. It depends on what shape I'm in. My, you know, my shape kind of fluctuates. <laughs> um, I get Dana White sometimes, and I get Joe Rogan sometimes, which is interesting. Oh, wow. I both. could see both of those, especially yeah. if I'm a little fucked up. I could yeah. be like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. From yeah. a distance, like, oh, it's yeah, Dana. Five in the morning, yeah. what's up, Dana? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or Joe Rogan, for sure, with yeah. the tattoos. Yeah, that's about it. Though. Especially in that's Vegas. Yeah. In Vegas, yeah. for sure. You never know what you're going to see in Vegas. Yeah. What are it's some... It's so weird, too. This is my... This, this, this hat. I always wear a hat. Um, the only time I don't wear a hat is in bed and on the set of Chopped. Other than that, I've got a million hats. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of known for this one I wear all the time that, to, that I'm not wearing today. It's kind of a trademark, but I always wear hats and it's like, it's like a, it's literally like, people will be like, and, and they're like, are you? And then I go, and then, no, it is! It's like the most incredible Take it thing. off, yeah. one like, second. Yeah. 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 What are some, uh, some must get dishes for people who have never been to Beauty in Essex oh, that sure. they have to get? Oh, I got a fave there for uh, Yeah, I do here too. Here in Vegas specifically? Yeah. 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 yeah, so um, so we have, the, the sort of the most iconic dish is, um, it has, kind of comes with a good story too that also involves drinking, um, is the, the grilled cheese and tomato soup. That's dumplings. My the dumplings. Yeah. Yeah. So That's good. my yeah. favorite. So when I opened Stanton Social, um, Stanton Social, we decided that we wanted a menu that was no entrees whatsoever. We wanted everything to be shareable, and we wanted to hit all the classics, right? We wanted a burger, we wanted a pizza, we wanted a taco, we wanted a this, we wanted a that. We wanted a soup. I was like, how are you gonna make soup shareable? You know what I mean? Like, yep. And so we decided to maybe do soup dumplings, and we, I came up with this French onion soup dumpling that people went bananas over. It ended up on Food Network's Greatest Things I Ever Ate, and blah, blah, blah. Very iconic dish. So when we get to Open Beauty in Essex, of course, it was like, well, you gotta do another soup dumpling. So we tried all these different ones, and some were good, some were some were terrible. Clam uh, clam chowder dumplings were not, <laughs> not good. Um, uh, chowder <laughs> dumplings. That's a pass, bro. That's a pass. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, brainstorming. Yeah. Let's keep it yeah. going, guys. Um, but you know, my favorite thing to kind of nosh on if I have a little bit of a high hangover is, especially in the winter, was always to get there's a there's a my, my favorite diner in New York just does this great grilled cheese sandwich with tomato soup. Yeah, yeah. So we were all we had all gone out um, you know, the night before my chefs. You know, we 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 typically, I mean, again, we're talking about 2010. Things have changed. Yeah. But at that time, we typically we were definitely a, a work hard, play hard kind of bunch. Yeah. So we would work all day and then we would go to the bars and shoot yeah, pool we all night. That, you know what I mean? I mean, we still do. It's just like like an older fighter. We have to pick our spots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
But uh, uh, but so we had we had all gone out and we were this is we were still in the experimentation phase. The restaurant wasn't open yet, and um, we all came in the next day and we were trying making all these stupid dumplings and nothing was working out. And we were like, we're all hungover and like you know what? Let's just take a break and just order. Let's order from the diner. So we ordered a bunch of grilled cheese sandwiches and tomato soup. And we're all yeah. sitting there eating it. And all of a sudden, I went. I got it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Make this into a dumpling. <laughs> and we all jumped up and ran in the kitchen. And it took a couple weeks to get it right. But um, but that was like the that was the thing. That's, the my, like, that's my must have. Yeah, they are yeah. for sure. It's They're everyone's so must good. have. Yeah. yeah it's so and everyone's got to take a photo. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, we've got this uh, little French dip. Uh, it's kind of like a open face kind of. It's like a it's like a crostini, I, I guess in in foundation, but it's. It's modeled after like the famous California Los Angeles French dip sandwich with like the au jus pour table sides. It's really, really delicious. It's got a horseradish aioli. It's a really simple dish, but really packs a lot of a lot of punch. Um, you know, we've got we've got we're known for our steaks. I mean, there's a steakhouse in the building, and we're good friends with them, and they do a great job, and I love eating there. But I think our steaks are really great too. Um, we've got a, we've got a, a, a dry aged tomahawk that I put up against anybody's um, with some special uh, secret seasonings and. There, there we go. Cooking, there we cooking, go. Yeah. Uh, All right. Techniques that like really that. take it over the top. So steaks are, are are definitely a hit. And actually, these chicken meatballs that are very simple. Really um, good. Yeah, those are too. Uh, really good. They're, they, they've become really like a trademark of the restaurant. They're in all three cities, and they, we sell them like hotcakes. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, they're really light and airy and uh, with this like truffle mushroom broth, um, and people love them. So. And our desserts, we have this Wonder Wheel that's kind of a showstopper. It looks like a Ferris wheel. See it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. it. So that's a, that's a must-have um, as well. So. That's a great photo moment. So we were talking about earlier too uh, in New York for Vandal. What's the, what's the what's the future for Vandal coming right now too? Well, you know, I I think it's probably fair to say that Vandal's going to live to fight another day, but in a different location. Cool. Um, the location that we have is is a little rough around the edges, um, and it's in an area of town that was kind of struggling. Not just us, but just the whole area. Um, uh, was struggling pre-pandemic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I think I would say we're we're weighing our options. Um, we definitely want to. Um, it's a great brand, and um, you know, uh, but the design, if you've ever seen it, is really over the top and amazing. And um, you know, our food really um, evolved. We kind of started doing street food, but we kind of got away from that. Um, and the the last year that we were open, I felt like it was some of the best food that you know I, we've ever created. Um, but the, the the area of town is just very difficult. Um, just it's hard to describe because um, I know that if we were located, um, you know, in meatpacking district, or if we were located in other areas of the city, like there'd be no issues. Right. But just it's just in a kind of a sketchy, it's kind of in a sketchy neighborhood. So so we I think we um, are sort of on the. I think we're leaning towards just moving it. So we may not have a vandal for a little while, but we'll have a vandal again. Yeah. You got to take awesome. the, what is it, a pink bunny uh, in the yeah, front? The, uh, purple bunny. Purple, yeah. purple bunny. Henry. Purple bunny. Yeah, you got to take the purple bunny. That yeah. went so crazy. Like oh, Everywhere on, on Instagram, media, you see the right? purple bunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Really crazy. Have you credited a lot of like just the, I mean, the food is obviously separate, but like the popularity of, of the restaurants, you guys, well, obviously the partnership with Tao Group yep. and their, the night lifestyle fashion of their whole business. Yep. I mean, the cool factor of Beauty and Essex and Vandal has just been honestly unmatched, like in, we, yeah. especially in multiple cities, yeah. right? It's really difficult to make sometimes restaurants really cool in one place and not really so much right. the other two, mm-hmm. but Beauty in New York and Vegas and LA. See and be seen. Yeah, yeah. it's just. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's, that's happened that I've noticed since I joined the group, I think, and, you know, this is going to sound like one of those things that I'm saying just to, to, be, to say it, but, it's, but, I, but I really truly mean it, is that the bigger we get and the larger we get and the more venues that we open, the more we continue internally to double down and triple town on um, hospitality as our, as, our, as our leading light, even, even above you know, food focus or whatever. It's about hospitality and giving guests a really special experience and making guests feel really welcome because we exist in markets that you have million choices right yeah. i mean look at las vegas look at just the cosmopolitan for instance yeah exactly uh, you know, on the floor that just that is on. Third floor you got is sdk you got haleo you got you know all these restaurants yeah. and scarpetta you know and so anyone that chooses us you know that's a that's a gift and so if you're choosing us we want to make sure that we're giving you you know we're giving you every every penny's worth you know what i mean and so we kind of get we we kind of haven't lost the vibe of this is so cool we get to throw a party every night which i think kind of used to be our at least, at least independently with Beauty and Essex and Stan Social, it was like, you know, oh, we get to throw a party every night. And, oh, yeah, yeah the food is good. The food's good. And, <laughs> yeah. and you know, and you get Food's good service. Chill too, yeah. And it's a party. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and I think we've turned that more into, you know, every we're, we're just as a company, our ethos is really to, going more towards being just incredibly hospitable, hospitable and, and, and um, having the party be kind of the 
Oh, and there's also a party and then going it on. Ends right, up right. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, our, our perspective has flipped a little bit. And I think that that's, I think that's noticeable. And I think that that's going to be a huge key to long-term success. Absolutely. That's great. Because, you know, as companies grow, it's, and, and uh, it's any company in any industry, I would imagine, you know, chain, big box grocery stores. I don't know. Like the, the more you, the bigger you get, it's, it's harder to keep your eye on the ball and it's easy to lose focus and sure. I, we've we are really like we remind ourselves we like i said we have a partner call every day we remind ourselves every day that it's about hospitality it's about the guest and yeah. you know without them or nothing that's seriously that's that's what it is well we want everyone to be able to experience your cooking your experience the tau group experience too so we are doing a giveaway guys yeah. so check out our instagram at the residency pod we are giving away a massive gift card to beauty in essex Yes. which is unbelievable. We're giving away a gift card to Marquee Day Club so you guys can go experience a little party. Might have some other surprises in there too. And we got some signed cookbooks yep. share uh, by you. Yep, I have them. Um, I also have a hot sauce and a barbecue sauce. I'll throw those in as well. Love See, that. we're stacking it up, guys. Fuck yes. Yeah, uh, keep it going. That. And what is that called? What's a hot sauce? Uh, so I have a salsa verde um, called the Green Man Alishi. Um, Ooh. which was uh, a Fleetwood Mac and then later a Judas Priest song. Um, and then I have uh, a award-winning, um, multi-award-winning barbecue sauce, believe it or not, um, from a guy from the Northeast. I don't know how I landed in landing awards for barbecue sauce, but I am. Um, it's called the Rattler. Um, it's, it, Rattler. And it's called the Rattler. It's got a really cool design with a rattlesnake, but it's called the Rattler because the primary pepper in it is a cascabel pepper. And a cascabel, if you shake it, it rattles the like rattlesnake. Like that's um, so cool. And so... Um, that that's uh, it's an amazing sauce actually. I'll have to send you guys some bottles of it. Um, and that's through a company I partnered with called High River Sauces. Okay. High River Sauces. Um, so if you anyone out there wants to check it out, just go to highriversauces.com and you can you can buy my my sauces or the, the High River makes amazing hot sauces All as well. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so you're so the winner's gonna get. We might have some other surprise things. Yeah, added no too, shit. But you're getting down and with all sorts of stuff. By the way, thank you for adding those yeah. too. Thank you for getting one. We want everyone to experience what you've been talking about this whole yeah, time too. Absolutely. Shout out to our friends at Tau Group, Richard Candido for helping putting this together today yeah. too. Mike Snedeker. Yeah. Um, and, and also, I'll even go so far as to say, um, you know, I'm easily found on Instagram at Santos Cooks is my handle. And if uh, whoever wins our giveaway, um, I can't make any promises. I'm all over the place. But if I happen to be in Vegas the weekend that they choose. Like I'll get personally involved. Like, Come I'll, say hi. I'll hang out with them. I'll have a I drink with that. them at Marquee Day Club. Come like, we'll on. The there you go. That. See, yeah. now the experience is getting We wild. might just yeah. absolutely have to yeah. rig this one. We're going to come eat, drink, yeah. and yeah. hang out yeah. with you. At, we'll just point. put hats on. You won't recognize us. <laughs> you know, the whole time. Uh, so we do do this really cool recommendation segment at the end, too. It's called Eat It, Drink It, Binge It, where we give people recommendations on what or where to eat, what or where to drink. And then Binge It is kind of like, it could be a TV show, a podcast, YouTube channel, anything you want to, people that you think something that you think is really cool to, for uh, people to binge. Uh, we'll start, so you have a little chance to do. But I think for your Eat It, we definitely want to hear some Vegas recommendations, obviously outside of Beauty and Essex, that you think yeah. are, are amazing, some of your favorites. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll, start, I'll start with my Eat It, too. Um, so like two years ago, we went to a party, and someone had truffle honey mm. in there, and we tried it, and my wife and I have been completely addicted to it, and she just bought, it was like these small ones, too, she just bought this pot of truffle honey <laughs> and anything with truffle is amazing yo it is crazy but she eats it now like by the spoonful You're a big it's truffle unbelievable guy. big truffle guy what do you put it on truffle everything Dude, crackers thin get, yeah. some, get some pizza dough make it or buy it Gr roll it out really thin put it on your you got a grill you got a barbecue yeah put it on your grill thin thin crust fresh apples goat cheese truffle honey oh wow there it is shit. There it is. Hey, babe, I'm coming home with babe, a little heater right now, too. <laughs> Don't you worry. I'm going to try to figure it out, but I got the grill part and the truffle honey part. I'll figure out the middle stuff. <laughs> he, said, he said pizza dough, make it or buy it. He's yeah. for sure buying it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm making no a fucking that. pizza dough, dude. So, Guys, I'm talking my secrets. Yeah, dude. Yes. This is homemade. Uh, all right, what do you got? What are you, what are you so eating, low? I just got back from Miami. Okay. Um, and I didn't get any Cuban food like I usually do. So in the airport, I stopped at Cafe Versailles. And got like a Cuban sandwich, got the ham and cheese croquetas, and like that's my yeah, thing. I, yeah. You have to have those in Miami. So I literally had to do the airport side of it because I was on the way out. But you do a little Cuban dances while you're in Miami too. You know, so what I was doing a lot of everything in Miami. It was, it was fun. Your man. Instagram story was wild. It was, it was, it was wild. Yeah, it was kind of hot. Sure. I was living my best post quarantine quotish life. Now they yeah. Now you closed it down. Yeah, yeah you shut, it shut down. that bitch down. <laughs> shut I it shut down. Miami down. Shut it down. <laughs> All right, Drew, what are you eating? 
Uh, yeah, so yesterday was my lady and I's six year anniversary. Congratulations. So, Happy anniversary. Thank Some you. beautiful posts on social media. They were great, right? Yeah, that that you guys are super warming. sentimental. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we also recently just had a baby two months oh, ago. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> during the pandemic. <laughs> Dallas is all about me right he's now. He's been busy. Episode. Uh, so it was our anniversary. We couldn't go anywhere. Obviously we had the kid. It's obviously still kind of quarantine ish, but had some takeout from Echo and Rig. I okay. told you guys a little yeah. earlier. Yeah. Great local steakhouse. Have you been? Mm -mm. Uh, so Echo and Rig got some ribeyes to go, a whole bunch of sides, some dessert to go. Got home. The steaks cut in raw. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely fucking raw. Oh, not man. medium rare. Not even medium. Not even like a Pittsburgh, like just right. a quick sear. Black and blue. <laughs> raw on the okay. inside. So I had to go up to my rooftop. Yeah. Turn the barbecue on. I had to finish cooking the fucking steaks. So you made Echo and Rig. I had Echo and Rig take home to go where I had to finish cooking. Restaurant prices. <laughs> and still paid full price. <laughs> yeah. So can, so, so can someone order from the steakhouse and send it to you and then order it again too and pay double the price? <laughs> can be arranged. Okay. Can be arranged. All right, listeners, you got this. Um, <laughs> that doesn't sound like much of a recommendation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's just, it's just what I ate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was my eat it. Uh, uh, made right, so at home at Rick. What are your, what are your like, go-to Vegas spots, obviously, besides the, the uh, beauty and the taco um, spots? Well, it's been a minute um, since I've eaten here because of this whole thing, but Latai downtown. Oh, is phenomenal. Yeah, Great favorite. spot. That's yeah. like my favorite spot in the city. Um, and, but for the last, um, in 2020, pre-COVID, every single weekend that I came out here, often both nights, Friday and Saturday, I have been finding myself going to Best Friend specifically for their fried bologna sandwich, hey, which is I've never had it. Fire. That's like the one um, thing I haven't had. Fi it sounds so dumb, right? Fried bologna sandwich, but I'm telling you, it's like crazy. And I've been bringing like my sous chefs with me, like one at a time, like you, <laughs> taking them, treating you them, have yeah. the sandwich, and they're like, "Chef, what is wrong with you? It's a fucking bologna <laughs> sandwich." And then they get it, and they're like. Oh, Fried bologna sandwich, huh? It's really great. Dude, now I'm going to have to try Best it. Friend's cool. You know, Best Friend's Vegas is kind of like used and abused a, a lot of concepts, right? Yeah. Because there's so many casinos, right? You have your yeah. normal steakhouse, Italian, this, that, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And Korean barbecue was never really a yeah. staple that they did, too. So Best Friend found like a cool niche. Hopefully, it, it comes out after the, the, yeah. the COVID yeah, right, too. But, but yeah, it's like... It's, it's a great feeling there, too. Epic spot, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's cool, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it plays super hood fucking yeah. rap. Yeah, yeah. Dope as fuck, yeah. Everyone's in there. And, um, yeah. and, you know, I used to have to go to Nashville to get Hattie, Hattie B's hot chicken, and now oh, it's yeah. right there at Cosmo, and yep. they do a good job. It's, you, you, I mean, it's not the same as, you know, you go to Nashville, you got to wait in line for an hour, and you're in Nashville, you just... 11 a.m. and you're drinking it's totally different <laughs> yeah. but here you know at the end of the shift I'll go down sometimes and get a hot chicken sandwich That's and awesome. it, they have done a good job of replicating like it's exactly the same as, as it's right as okay I haven't eaten there either no, yeah, I've had yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. both in yeah. Cosmo and Nashville so. oh wow yeah. I think that I think they're, if you close your eyes you wouldn't know yeah it's awesome I got doubt that and I like that too fried bologna sandwich okay yeah uh, dude, I, I want to try that too it's fucking good okay uh, my drink it um, dude the other day I'm not a huge white wine guy Really? I love wine. Not, not a huge red wine guy. It kind of gives me Harper. Never been a big fan. Yeah. I love red wine. Um, but I love sake. So the, okay. I've been drinking sake, kind of like white wine home. This brand Soto. Not that expensive. Really good. Soto sake is unbelievable. That's like my new go-to. Have it in the chiller, in the fridge. Drink it. I get like a super... Whenever I drink sake, I get like a happy... <laughs> happy drunk like I'm just happy yeah, as yeah, shit yeah, right? yeah, you yeah. know like if ever I'm like going out beforehand too if I can like take shots of sake and go to a sushi restaurant too I'm pumped I'm ready like I'm good so Soto Saki go get it S-O-T-O Soto Saki that's my recommendation alright hot All right. Hey, it, nice. I know I know I'm gonna try it I always try Jeff yeah. see how much shit he's full you yeah, know yeah. see I am on it truffle honey and sake is yeah. what I'm coming <laughs> home to <laughs> alright what are you drinking uh, so I'm usually a, a flat water guy when I go to the restaurants and stuff, but this pack of Topo Chico mineral water showed up to my office. And Topo I, Chico? Yeah, yeah, bro. That's a TJ Lavin special, yeah, right? TJ yeah, TJ Lavin, yeah. I, I totally forgot about it. So yeah. I saw it, looked, I was like, oh, it looks good. Put it in the freezer, drank it, super, super yeah. ice cold. Money. Fire, so bro. Topo Chico is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's, it's like super bubbly. It was really good. Yeah. I was actually... Shock. Everyone's why everyone's obsessed with this. Okay, I gotta try it. It's, it's good. It's good. Uh, do you like sparkling water though? Uh yeah. Like I with mean, dinner? I don't. See, you I don't? don't. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the thing. I feel like it doesn't quench my thirst. Like I'll drink yeah. it, but if I'm like, oh my god, I'm thirsty, and I drink it, I feel like I'm twice as thirsty. Yeah, no, it's definitely not. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like, definitely not something you do. Cup, you know, some box like salt water and go me. slam some yeah. fucking Topo Chico. <laughs> yeah, it's like salt water. You know, you have like no, salt bro. water in your thirst. You're like, shit, I'm fucking thirsty right now. You know. Uh, all right, what are you drinking? Uh, so we're all big, also huge partiers here, uh, and we're big seltzer guys. Yeah, Ooh, are you yeah. a seltzer guy? Uh, the hard seltzer. The hard sel hard seltzer. Wait, I didn't think so. I didn't think I was either uh, until I started. Yeah, so it. honestly, I'm <laughs> yeah. not a big vodka guy. I pr much prefer bourbon and tequila over vodka. But uh -huh. these high noon seltzers, yeah, yeah, they're good. 
phenomenal. Yeah, it's real good. natural juice and a little bit of vodka and some, you know, it's carbonation. Yeah. Amazing. Crack that. And can. they took, took off because of Barstool Sports and yeah. anything fucking Dave Portnoy touches just turns, explodes. Turns crazy. Yeah. Uh, high noon seltzer. Mm-hmm. The watermelon, phenomenal. All right, I'm gonna okay. have to try it. Okay, I haven't try tried it. the watermelon flavor. It's good. I'll try that. Yeah. All right, what are you drinking? Well, you know, disclaimer: I work for Jägermeister, and I, I spread the gospel. Jägermeister, I've been working for them since 2013. I cook with the ingredients, and this is a whole long story. That could be another episode. But this is not because I work for them. They just released uh, a cold brew Ooh. that is Ooh. unbelievable. I had it. I tried it. Yeah, forget anything Very you've good. ever, 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 ever thought about Jägermeister, whether you like it or don't like it, whether you love it or hate it. Re- don't just forget about it. It's it's, it's but it is Jägermeister. It's a Jägermeister base with a really great coffee um, and like hints of uh, cacao. And um, it is, I mean, it is so delicious. I can't even tell you. It's keep it in the freezer, pour it over ice. I do a little like oat milk float on top. Ooh. Yeah. And, um, oh, that sounds good. It is. It's outrageously delicious. It just hit the market. You can find it anywhere, anywhere. I mean, you can find it in Las Vegas now, but literally only like within like the last month or yeah. so. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's tremendous. It's so good. I like Jaeger. Some people hate it. Yeah, yeah. I love. Jaeger. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I love Jaeger. I think it's a lot more complex. People see it as like that shot, you know, chug shot brand, which it which it is. But, <laughs> but there's more complexity yeah. to it than people give credit for. It makes you know, uh, Willie Shine is the Jaegermeister brand uh, um, mixologist, and he makes some incredible incredible cocktails with, with straight up Jägermeister. Then they have another product called Manifest, which is a, sort of their super premium limited batch, blah, 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 that makes great cocktails. But this cold brew is, for me, a game changer. Like, it is wow. just tremendous. It's, it's good. I'm going to have to get that yeah. one, too. Yeah. 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 Especially when it's like like, like Jäger, when it's super cold. Yeah. 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 It's really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, I like it. Well, binge it. My binge it, besides chop with my guy over here. Um, I want to do a food one, too. I love watching. You watch the hot ones on First We Feast? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're that watching people. Watching people. Look, I'm. I am not an amazing hot sauce eater, right? Like, if it's really, really spicy, yeah. like you, I'm sitting there. I'm miserable. I'm sweating. Like, my face is good too. Like, I'm not going to the Thai place ordering a nine or anything like <laughs> yeah, that yeah. too. You know? No, I, I like will physically eat a ghost pepper. Oh, I know. Oh. I MC a ghost pepper eating contest every oh. year in New York at the at the Hot Sauce Expo. Oh. Uh, that's insane. That sounds yeah. terrible. To I don't. Know, I don't know why. It's so funny to me to watch this show and watch people eat hot sauce and be miserable. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's complete gold. Like if you th- if you look at it, Red like, wow, what a genius idea. Interview celebrities and make them eat hot sauce during the interview and see what they can get out of their mouth. That's the whole point. It's yeah, yeah, it's fucking crazy. I so I like binged a ton of their episodes and just was laughing my ass off too. So if you haven't seen it, it's called Hot Ones. Uh, it's like on Complex's YouTube. First yeah. We Feast. Yeah, super good. Nice, nice. And they have a reality show now too. I mean, on, uh, on TV, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, yeah uh, like a game show. Yep. So yeah. they bring in like people and they make them eat. They do like hot sauce competitions. That's incredible. And so they really blew up. Nice. What do you What do you got? So I'm usually very like I watch something motivating or inspiring. This time, not at all. Okay. I've been the trash. Yeah, I've been watching this stupid thing called Floors Lava on Netflix. Have you oh seen this God. stupid no. thing? The fuck is that? I just like I used to watch like Wipeout when people would like do these dumb things, yeah. jump yeah, on yeah. walls and fall all over the fucking. It place. was like the number one show on Netflix, or whatever, like overnight, right? Yeah. So it's Floors yeah. Lava. It's basically it's like a big pool of water, and like you have to try to traverse all these things, but people just eat shit. It's like the funniest thing. Yeah, so. just jump over. Simple yeah. laughs. Simple laughs. Simple laughs. Look, guys, so that's, that's been, what I've been watching. It's been a tough few months. Sometimes we got to it's dial it down. I need to smile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What are you binging? I'm the king of the trash. You oh, guys man. know that. Uh, no, no, no. But I took up, I think it was your recommendation, the Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That shit was fucking crazy. Crazy. Yeah, that it went on for so long, untouchable. I never yeah. watched it. My, watch it. Have you watched it? No. It's super sketchy. But I like that looking. stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fucking insane. mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah. Jeffrey Epstein, filthy rich. Everyone, yeah. everyone yeah. who North watched Miami. it said it, it was yeah. just, Thomas. they can't believe how it took so long for him oh, to get. Oh, yeah, like, dude. Untouchable. <laughs> yeah, Did like, you see Abducted in Plain Sight? No, I no. Watch it on Netflix. On Netflix, it's it's abducted this, in plain sight. This woman who gets oh kidnapped twice. from London, right, no, or overseas? No, here, here, here? here, okay. You got it. It's crazy, but anyway, she get twice. Okay, yeah, it's crazy. Double recommendation. Abducted in plain right. sight. Probably the Boom. craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, what are you binge right now that someone should watch? Um, well, or listen I, or to or read or, 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 or no, whatever. I just, I just we just binged um, Dead to Me on Netflix. Okay, oh, that's yeah. a good. Um, yeah. With um, Christina Applegate, Applegate. and Linda Cardellini. Um, which is amazing. Like everything's a nail biter and it's suspenseful. Um, and then we are right now, uh, r- right now, binge watching every night. We saw three of episodes late, late last night. Um, we are into really, we're really into procedurals like Lauren, Lauren Order and Chicago PD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's yeah. one on Amazon called Bosch. Bosch. Um, that is kind of I never had really heard of it, and um, but I love it. It's like they're about well, 
as soon as this pandemic is over, they're going to film their seventh and final season. So it's had legs. Um, yeah. It started out in like 2014. It was totally off my radar. Um, we started watching it. We're, I think we're just about at the end of season three now. Um, it's a super gritty. It's set in L.A. It's super gritty, like hardcore, like police drama, like like a Lauren Order Chicago deep. But because it's on Amazon Prime, they can curse, which makes it so much more. Oh, realistic. there we go. I need yeah. some fuckery. So you know what I mean? Much yeah. more yeah. realistic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You know what I mean? I need like, the f bombs. People get the NBC murdered ones. and like you know. What Gosh I mean? yeah. dang it, police officer! I'm yeah. upset. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the acting is great. Um, and one thing that they have that they are not. Aff- I don't want to like spoiler alert, but I will spoiler alert a little bit. Um, they are not afraid to kill off somebody really important that, that I love way that. early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely unexpected. Yeah, yeah. It's the best. Like yeah, we've had brain. three, three in three seasons. We've had three jump off the couch. Like <laughs> what? The <laughs> main guy, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like it's really crazy. You need you need those though too. You need to get your mind blown. That's yeah, a little, like little Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. Like Game of Thrones yeah. season yeah. one. Yeah. The main dude dies. Yeah. Like what the fuck is yeah. this? <laughs> what the fuck is this show? Yeah. Dude? You're just gonna so, kill your own show? I okay. highly recommend it. Bosh, I got it. Bosh, Amazon, Amazon. Yeah. All right, Amazon guys. Thank you very much for checking back in with us again. The reviews, subscribing, everything at the Residency Pod for the giveaway. Check us out too. Chris, man, Santos, you're incredible too. Appreciate at you, Santos man. Cooks yeah. for his Instagram. Check it out. Beauty and Essex, go eat there immediately. Share the cookbook, go buy it. We're and eat. congratulations pre, to our pre winner, pre congratulations to our winner who's about to win this crazy giveaway. Check us out at the Residency Pod. Take us to dinner. See you later. With you.